So, people have been asking me for a, a software guide for the RX Vega 56 and the 64s. So I went ahead, I made some nice Word documents that you can follow step by step and then just polish them off and get it done. I've also put links in the description to all the software I use, um, uh, the guides as well. So it should be pretty straightforward as far as things go. So here is the guide for the RX Vega 56. So first off, you'll navigate to this Google short link that I put in and then download uh, this archive. Uh, it's just a zip file full of everything that you need. Then you will uh, install the drivers. And it's important to note that these are the August 23rd blockchain drivers and not the August 11th blockchain drivers, okay guys? Because I used the August 11th drivers and I experienced issues for like three days um, on Windows 7 and Windows 10. Like it just wasn't working the way it should have been. Um, and then I switched over to the August 23rd drivers and then everything worked fine. So um, also this setup assumes that you're configuring this on Windows 10 64 bit, uh, a fresh install. Okay, um, I did use Windows 7 to try to get this all going and I ran into a lot of issues and I had to use um, some specialized Robinhood software and stuff like that, which wasn't as good as, uh, as this setup. So anyways, once you've installed the blockchain drivers, the next thing that you want to do is disable cross crossfire mode. Okay, because you will experience a lot of issues mining if crossfire mode is enabled. Okay. So for the uh, RX 56s, um, what you're gonna have to do is just BIOS flash them, okay? And so I have a step-by-step -step guide here, um, but the first thing that you're gonna do is go into your ATI Win Flash um, folder, which I've included in the software package, okay? And uh, launch ATI WinFlash and then save the BIOS of your RX Vega cards in case there are any issues flashing them, okay? That's the first thing that you want to do. Uh, and then the next thing that you want to do is you want to download the RX Vega 64 BIOS versions for your cards and you can download them from Tech Power Up. And, uh, and they're pretty solid, like their, their site is great. Download uh, the exact version um, of the BIOS that you need for your cards uh, just the 64 instead of the 56 and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna flash those 64 BIOS to um, the 56 cards, okay, and then that's just gonna give you way better uh, hash rates right there so Once you're in the directory uh, of ATI win flash and you have the downloaded BIOS in that folder you can go into command prompt type ATI win flash.exe and then dash F, dash F means to flash, okay? And then dash P specifies which device, okay? So if I put zero, that means it's gonna flash the BIOS on my first card. If I put one, that's the second card, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, okay? So that's pretty much the situation. And then here, you're gonna put the name of the BIOS file. So say it's like RX Vega, 64 MSI okay if that's the name of it that's fine and then you want to flash your first card second card or sorry first card second card third card fourth card fifth card sixth card okay and then you're ready to rock okay so once that's all said and done and you flashed all of your cards you're ready to move on to the next step you want to uninstall all of your drivers and you're probably thinking well we just installed the drivers, why do we want to uninstall them? Well, the thing is, once you flash the BIOS on your cards, you have to update your drivers, right? So, because they're initially detected as RX Vega 56 cards, so you have to remove your driver software and then install your driver software again after you've flashed your cards so that they register and function properly, okay? So, you'll boot into safe mode uninstall your drivers, and then you'll reinstall them, okay? Right here. The next thing that you're gonna do 
is install your registry power play tables okay so when you're going through this there's like there's several uh, clocks and volts that you can set in your power play tables so I included uh, a zip archive of a whole whack ton of um, clocks and volts that you guys can test right you can implement those on your system and then see if they work see if you get better results um, for the veg for the Vegas 56s I generally use um, 875 millivolts or 905 uh, millivolts for them because I found that those give me the best performance and the best hash rates um, along with power consumption at about 135 watts uh, or 140 watts per card okay um, so pretty decent so you'll download uh, those and then you're going to select your desired registry file like whichever one you decide to use um, open them up in notepad and then you have to adjust these four characters at the end or these four digits okay so zero as we talked about before is going to indicate your first GPU okay and then as as you create more registry files because you need one registry file per GPU so if you have six GPUs you need six registry files okay and then you'll increment them accordingly so you'll have one registry file right that looks like this then you have one that looks like this 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 and then this okay so you'll have uh, five or six registry files if you have five or six GPUs right and uh, you'll save them and they'll have a whole bunch of gibberish which is your power play um, content like the tables themselves beneath that and I believe it's written in hex um, but it'll look like gibberish to you know like 80% of the population so anyways um, you're just gonna adjust these four characters save them and then implement them you're on your way okay and uh, once you have that done you're ready to do a reboot okay um, for your registry settings to take effect you have to reboot your system okay so do that and then once the system comes back up you're ready to uh, place your cast XMR miner um, I've included that in the archive as well so you'll just throw that on your desktop um, that's that's what I use for mine and then you'll customize your run.bat file, okay? So you're going to change your mining pool, and then you're going to change um, however many cards you're gonna be mining with. So if you're mining with one, you'll do uh, dash G space one, I'm pretty sure it is, um, and so on and so forth. I've included that in the archive as well, so you guys can take a look at it. Okay, yeah. So dash G, zero, first card, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, so uh, again, adjust your pool and adjust your wallet because that's what you're going to want to do there. And then you can proceed to step seven. Now, this is where you're going to do all of your overclocking for your, your Vega 56s. So now your BIOS is flashed, your drivers are installed. Okay, and now you're ready to do some overclocking in overdrive okay these are the settings that I use for my cards um, I use a 1050 uh, memory clock because uh, 11 is just pushing it a little bit for me um, 1100 is just a little too much uh, some people I've heard some people go all the way up to 1200 or 1150 um, but I don't know it's just pushing my card too hard so I I like this I'm comfortable with these settings and uh, I'm confident in uh, the longevity of my cards because of that okay so this is what I use and I get about 1850 hash on kryptonite okay so if you want to match these settings you can but I take no responsibility for any issues that you uh, encounter or if your cards are damaged or anything like that okay I don't want to take any responsibility for that all of this you know if you guys are already doing this then I think you already accept the consequences if you do experience any um, personally I haven't so you should be good to go as far as I'm concerned 
So the next thing that you're going to want to do is configure DevCon for automation, and then you can start mining, right? So open startup.bat with notepad. Uh, now adjust the directory in there where DevCon resides, because that's what that's where you want to direct it to, so that the script can launch DevCon, okay? In order to restart your cards, so disable and then re-enable. The reason why you have to disable your cards and re-enable them is because the blockchain driver is a little buggy and in order to get 100% performance out of it, um, by disabling it and then re-enabling it, it actually enables the HBM um, modules properly, right? So it's really important that you do that, otherwise you will see only like 1300 hash or 1400 hash, which is no good. Okay, so go into the startup.bat file and adjust these directories. So the directory for devcon.exe, okay, and then the location of your miner and your miner batch file. Okay, you're gonna adjust that as well. And uh, once you're done that, you're mining, you're done. You're, you're gonna get those same hash rates that, uh, that popped up in my last video, okay? So which is huge which is huge for the people that don't know how to configure this. You now have a nice guide that you can follow. Um, it's simple, tested step by step, um, and it should be fully operational. If you guys experience any issues with the guide um, while going through it, please let me know, and I will go ahead and modify it and, up and upload a revision to, uh, to the Google Drive. Okay, guys? Um, so. I not only did an RX Vega 56 software guide, I also did an RX Vega 64 software guide. So I spent like at least five hours making these or something like that. So here's the 64 guide. So again, the first thing that you're gonna do is install your drivers, okay? And ensure that crossfire mode is off and now the nice thing about the 64s is that you don't have to do uh, a BIOS flash. It's already a 64, right? Um, so you can install your registry power table right off the bat. Um, should, there is a few things that I can update here, but anyways. So you'll use, uh, you'll install the registry um, power table, right? And then you'll do the same thing. You'll modify these last four digits accordingly um, to ensure that your cards are getting uh, the registry power tables applied to them, okay? So, once that's all said and done and you've applied your proper uh, power table, then you're going to go ahead and place the cast miner. Now, I do want to stress that um, the clocks and volts that I use for my power play tables are usually... Um, 915 millivolts or 905 millivolts if I can hack it um, because that gives me really good performance about 1950 hash per card and then it also outputs um, again about 135 or 140 watts of power consumption which is really good okay so as you uh, as you place the miner again you're just gonna want to modify your pool right and modify your uh, wallet there and then you can start doing your overdrive overclocking okay and these are the settings that I use for my cards um, as you can see here I, I do 1050 with a 915 millivolt on the memory and then uh, for the clock speed I do 1344 by 915 um, for my millivolts and that seems to be working phenomenal for me um, I don't have any issues. My settings aren't a hundred percent proper, but they work for me and uh, and that's what counts, right? So that's the reason uh, that's the reason for that. Then the next thing that you're gonna do is again, you're just gonna configure Devcon for automation and and then you can start mining. So um, after that, you should be seeing about nineteen hundred and fifty hash and uh, if it's your first card, you'll see about 1850, maybe 1900, because that card does have to handle the video feed from your monitor. 
Okay, so here we are with one of my mining rigs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our startup bat so you guys can see exactly what happens when I do this. So first off, it's going to disable the cards, okay? So now it's gonna disable the six GPUs and then it's going to re-enable them when this timer finishes. Here we go, and it's using devcon.exe to disable and then re-enable them. Okay. So, once this is done, there we go. So it set the profiles from overdrive, and now it's mining. So it's it's did that all automatically, right? Through the script, which is awesome. That's That's exactly what you wanna see, right? And it looks like, so we're getting about, Jesus, what are we getting here? 1820, 1860. Um, that's basically the hash that we're getting here. So 1860, one of the cards is 1300. So I'll just shut down the rig and bring it back up and then that'll be fine. But um, yeah, basically that's what we're looking at. So about 1858, 1860 or so. That's about our peak, okay, for these cards, which is decent. That's pretty good. That's pretty good at like 135 watts. So that is pretty much um, how you earn like 50 or 60 bucks a day doing this, okay? And so I do want to shut this down just for now. And uh, I want to bring up calculator quick okay okay so as I was saying so we're we were doing like 10,100 or 10,200 or, or whatever it was right so let's do the math on what that earns us okay so we're doing hash so 497.65 ETN a day now I just really want to show you guys how I break this down quickly okay so Okay. Slow as ass. Fucking on team viewer. Okay, so bring this up. ETN. Okay, guys. So you can see what ETN's worth right now. It's worth quite a bit. Um, so we're gonna do this. Open up a new. Um. We're gonna do USD to CAD. So 0 0.17 cents in ETN, right? And we're getting roughly 497 ETN a day, which is $84.49 Canadian. So that's the math right there. There's there's no other way about it. It's not like it's not like it's more complicated than this. This is not. Um in fact you either earn a little more than what you see here or a or a little bit less um, but the figures don't really deviate that much so if you have two of these rigs let's call it a thousand ETN a day right you're getting hundred and seventy dollars a day okay so now if we do the math on that monthly we do hundred and seventy times thirty days okay that's five thousand one hundred dollars a month okay that that's the math right there it, numbers don't lie right but Anyways, I hope that these um, RX Vega guides, the 56 and the 64 guides, can pull you guys uh, a little closer to these figures um, by following them. And hopefully they're easy enough to follow. Um, I, you know, I really try for that. I push for that to, uh, to make the documentation, um, you know, sleep work, essentially. You just do step by step by step. It's done and you're on your way. So, uh, let me know if you guys like the guides. Like, should I keep doing the guides? Do you guys prefer the, the Microsoft Word documents? Or are you guys more fans of, like, text document guides and stuff like that? Just regular text documents. Or do you guys prefer videos, like instructional videos? Um, let me know what you guys think, because that is what I will push towards in the future. I personally like making the Word documents. I don't mind. Um, but it's nice to know your guys' opinion.
on that situation as well. So thank you guys for tuning in, and as always, stay regular.